Hey everybody, welcome to TIW Podcast. I'm Eric, and today uh, I'm doing a quick episode to finish out the month, uh, previewing what's coming up uh, these next few days, this next week, the next two weeks, um, all the stuff that I'm really excited for, and also uh, a little bit about my travels today. Um, so I am recording this right before I, uh, head into down, well, I am in downtown Phoenix right now, but, um, uh, head out of my car, out of the, the comfortable air conditioning, which you can probably hear humming away, um, and into the sweltering 93 degree heat on September 30th. How is it this hot anywhere on September 30th? This is, this is insane, but, um, I expected as much. I was actually surprised how cold it was in Las Vegas, which is where I flew into. Um, but the sun had barely just come up, so it was, it's understandable that it was, it was still chilly. But, um, yeah, uh, I, I got super early this morning, only got a, a, like three hours of sleep, um, and uh, headed to the airport. I uh, got, got, got a ride to the airport, um, as opposed to driving myself, because I'll be gone for a, a little while. Um, it was still would have been cheap. It would have been cheaper to, um, to park at the, in the, in the shuttle lot at the airport, but then it's like a week and a half of my car being out in the elements. So I think the, the extra like $20 is okay as far as it's it, it, it kind of worth it in that. Yeah, it's nine days of protection for my car, but, um, uh, what, what, what was I saying? Um, yeah, super early, super early, um, got into Las Vegas at about eight, eight, no, 7 a.m. And then headed over to, uh, the rental car place, which is off, off parking. So you have to take the shuttle to this place. I'm not going to say the name of the company because I'm about to talk a little bit of trash about it, but, um, yeah, I saw the reviews because uh, I kind of booked blindly, just got the best deal that I could find, and um, I regret that choice now because I well, the car is fine, but I'm not not too thrilled with the company. But um, huh, well, let let's say they it, they're very more pushy than people usually are than companies usually are about buying their insurance. And um, I, I wasn't too thrilled with that. And then uh, once I finally did get my car, um, I said, oh, the the car we have for you is, the tank is empty. So um, yeah, you have to go fill it up. Like, what? This is, how did you... Uh, as a, the, my my reservation is in there for like a month at least. How do you, they not have a car fueled up, ready to go after after the time that I was supposed to be there? I got I, I had a reserve for like eight o'clock. I got it over there by like eight, I think like eight thirty or something. But whatever, pretty pretty annoying. Um, and and uh, it really felt like. The guy just kept saying, oh, you never know what's going to happen. You never know what's going to happen. Uh, if, 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 you, if the car gets scratched or something, we're going to chart. Basically, he was explaining how crappy they are about the car getting damaged in any smallest possible way. And he's like, yeah, you never know what's going to happen. Uh, all the time that's in there, you're going to be charged for the time that it's out of service getting fixed with like a scratch or a dent or something. And I'm like, w- that's ridiculous because looking at the car you don't you guys don't take the car out of service to fix minor things like that because there's minor things like that already happened to it and they've not been fixed and what kind of people have you already scammed a bunch of people to do that already and then not fixed those things like people often do when they get uh, insurance money for accidents and stuff they get uh, the money to fix a certain thing and then they end up just they end up not fixing it with that money that they get it's the same sort of thing it's a it's a disingenuous and also a scam when it's being used as a as a as a, 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 a 
not a bargaining chip, the negative version of a bargaining chip. What is, what's the negative version of bargaining chip? Blackmail, not black, sorry. extortion? It's ex, is it extortion? Like, it, it's, it felt like a threat. Like, if I didn't get their insurance that you never know what's going to happen, you might get hit by a semi-truck, and then you have to pay for all of it. You're on the hook for everything. That kind of thing. If I was a little bit nervous heading out of there. And then uh, since I had to refuel right away, um, I was confused. I was like, oh, my God, they don't even have a gas cap on this thing. But it turns out it's a, it's a Ford Focus, and 2017 and onward, as it turns out, has a new style of gas cap that um, does not have an actual, like, screw-on cap thing. And I guess it's, like, it's actually better, except when you spill fuel over the outside, and it's not so good. But anyway, um, I, I was almost more... I was almost mad... Additionally, I was almost an increased amount of mad uh, when I saw that. But then a, the quick bit of research prevented an embarrassing situation where I drive right back there. And I was like, this car doesn't even have a gas cap on the... Th-. Um, I'm like, no, it's supposed to be like that. Okay. Look, sometimes just, just, just stop for a second, look it up, and see, like, okay, is this... Uh, am I just dumb? Maybe I'm just dumb. And in that instance, yes, I was. But maybe I wasn't dumb. It was just something I'd never seen before. I don't think anybody except for Ford Focus drivers have seen that. Maybe. Unless they're on other Fords, too, that style of thing. But even even then, it's only on, from what I understand, they only started using them in seven, for the 2017 models. So it's only like three years of using those things, using those puppies. But... <laughs> um, uh, yeah, well, but I, I give the car itself. I do like the car itself. Um, it's ha, it's has gotten ex, extremely good mileage. Um, I'm probably blowing all of that great mileage right now by just sitting here parked and idle with the air conditioning on. But um, I still have over just over a quarter of a tank left. And that was driving uh, about 300 miles, a little over 300 miles, maybe a little less, around 300 miles from uh, Las Vegas to Phoenix. So that's 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 way better than uh, my car at home gets. For that same trip, I would have had to already refueled, um, like half, not halfway through there, but but still. Um, so yeah, I do, I do recommend this car, but not the company that I will not name, um, for, wait, I don't know, whatever, is it, so, yeah, I think it's better if I just don't say the name, except, um, I think if you look up, uh, common, uh, car companies, just look at the ratings, if, if the rating is less than three stars out of five, um, then, you know, just, just stay away from there. I don't think the savings is worth it. Um, and if you're, if it's like a mystery, uh, mystery grab bag type of thing on Hotwire, which I think this might have been, it's one of these companies. If it's one of those, uh, unless it's like way, way cheaper, but even then it's still really suspicious just just go with the ones that you it, it lists what company it is so you know exactly what company it is or if the grab bag of companies is all stuff that's three stars or better then that's worth a shot i think so that's my advice for renting cars and all that and also check uh check out if um if it's off off site uh location for the rental car, because that could be, uh, it'll add time, it'll add time to your trip, and all that kind of thing, but anyway, um, while I was on the airplane, uh, a great thing about the, uh, so jumping backwards just a little bit, the flight to Las Vegas, um, went very well, um, getting to the airport was, was fine, uh, my driver, it took a while to get a driver, because it was so early in the morning, 
and the closest driver was like 20 minutes away so i was a little bit worried but the guy's pretty cool um and then like in the last minute of the ride i find out that he's a former band director and he knows all about drum about drum corps and i was like oh yeah i've worked, worked with blue devils and all of that and he knows, knows exactly what we're talking about and like oh well we could have been talking about that this entire time instead of talking about all the other really not as fun stuff to talk about that we were talking about so um and i'm not gonna get into the, for the things that we were talking about because it is uh, a lot of it was a bummer so um i mean it was a good conversation but it's a like bummer topic so not gonna talk about that but um yeah i got to got there plenty of time and uh i because i thought i was gonna have to go through the regular check-in process for my 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 luggage but i didn't realize at least at the denver airport and probably all southwest hub airports there's a separate a-list line for checking in bags and that was fantastic i just as there's only one other person in that line whereas the regular line was just heaps of people deep i don't think that's the word i wanted to use but i wanted to use deep at the end of it but i i think heaps of people deep that kind of works it's a it's a little bit of a tongue twister um i get down to security and i like oh there's so many people I can go into, again, take advantage of my A-list thing. And I end up going into the pre-check because the, the signs are, like, right next to each other. And I thought it was pointing to that. I don't know. I got, I'd only gotten three hours of sleep. So I go up to, 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 to the gal who's, who's at that station. And she says, oh, you're not, you're not pre-check. You have to go out and go over there. I was like, but, wh- wait, what about A-list? She's like, What? What about a list? What I don't know what that is. I'm like, okay, okay, okay. You work security at an airport in a hub city for Southwest, and you don't know what a list is. Um, she she realized what I was talking about, but but still, like how uh, we're talking. Uh, does it, people don't make this mistake? Even make this, even if she only ever works that line. I'm the first person to ever have made that mistake, apparently. I don't know. While she's working, anyway. Uh, but so I, I go to the the, the 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 restricted access line or whatever it's called at the pri- priority thing. Nobody checks my ticket or whatever to jump into that line. I could just been some some regular person, so <laughs> you know, just a regular person, not a, a, a privileged A list person. Um, so, I mean, you, give it a shot. Try to just jump into that line anyway. The worst that can happen is that it'll be like, hey, you're not supposed to be in here. But in this case, that line just go, gets combined with the other line. And they're just, like, trying to get people through as fast as possible. And there's I was one of two people in that other line anyway. So, I think it was fine. Um, I mean, it was fine because I wasn't, like, admonished. And even if somebody had, like, stopped me, I had, I was in the right place for what I needed to do. They just didn't ask for that stuff so anyway i ended up getting to my gates well ahead of time and then i was annoyed that then i had to wait because <laughs> ideally i get there after having used the bathroom and everything uh you know the, the the usual pre-flight stuff like walk up right as they start boarding that is that's this that's the sweet spot right there at least with Southwest flights. Um, if it's another flight, like uh, I have a flight on Spirit on uh, uh, tomorrow, actually. And for those flights, I, I have a reserved seat, a specific seat. There's absolutely no reason to get onto the plane until, until the last person. Because I don't have a bag that I have to stuff into the things. I'm just going to have my backpack that goes under a seat in front of me and me that goes in the seat and uh i know exactly which seat it's going to be there's no reason to get onto a flight any earlier than right before they close the door basically in my opinion of course there are other situations where getting onto the flight early is good and all that but um 
yeah, but okay. Well, I'll talk about that after that flight occurs and after I see the show that evening. AEW the opening, not that evening, but the the next night. Um, I'll be in, in uh, Washington D.C. for that, and I'm really excited for that. But I am also really, really excited for Monday Night Raw tonight because it's the season premiere. Um, and I just drove the 300 miles to get over here. Um, it was pretty much it, it was pretty uneventful. It was entirely uneventful. I didn't. I mean, I didn't crash or anything like that. And so I'd say it's uneventful. A lot of impatient drivers around me that I uh, wanted to go much, much faster, especially through work zones. I really don't like that at all when people speed in work zones and change lanes quickly in work zones, all of that. It, it's just, everybody stop doing it, please. It's very unsafe, both for you, other drivers, and especially more so than anything for the workers that are out there. Even if you, it, you, you don't see workers around, they could be like working on something down on the ground and they're right on the other side of the barricade or something like that. And you don't know, you, you just don't know. And also a lot of the times, um, if it's a temporary paved situation, it's also for um, your vehicle's safety, uh, like bumps and dips and dives and grooves and ruts and all of that. It's uh, going through those at the normal speed, uh, highway speed, is dangerous. So I really don't like when people speed through work zones, even if there are no visible workers anywhere, because uh, a work truck could suddenly slow down and get into that part of the work zone. All the, all the many, many reasons. There's so many reasons not to do it. I hate it when people do. So, anyway, that's my rant about that. Um, <laughs> at the airport, okay, at the airport, before, this is just a long ram. I, I basically just want to use up as much space as possible. It's the last day of the month. So, I have like over 100 megabytes left for the podcast storage space for the month. So, I'm just going to ramble a little bit. But, um, oh, I should see if they message me. Oh, I didn't. Not yet. Um, what was a? Uh, oh yeah, at the airport, I was sitting there at the gate, and the lady sitting right behind me is talking to the person next to her, and she says something like, "Ah, it's so warm when it goes down my throat. It's it's it, it feels so good." <laughs> and I know she was. I I mean, maybe I don't know. Maybe she wasn't. I was pretty sure that she was talking about coffee or tea or some other warm beverage. But the way she said it was not... It was just a gross way to say it. And maybe it was a really nice way to say the like an actual gross thing. But, um, I yeah, yeah. Uh, another great thing about the flights uh, itself was that uh, there was 50, a total of 50 people for 142 seats or however many seats there are um there was uh there are a few rows in the front that had people like two people in a set of three seats um because people really want to get right out of there you gotta blah 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 blah. there is enough pretty much enough rows that everybody could have their own set of three seats in fact there is a completely empty row behind me um, and I was like the 10th row of the airplane. So there's 90 open seats on the entire flights, which is kind of crazy. Um, it was nice. I didn't have to, I wasn't, there was nobody right behind me. So nobody like bumping into my seat, nobody right in front of me. So I wasn't worried about bumping into their seats. I was just bumping away and it was just totally fine. That sounds weird. Um, and it was good. I got a couple of really good photos, I think from the air as well, flying into Las Vegas. Um, so on the way back, on the way down here from Las Vegas, um, I stopped and gra- grabbed some food at Wendy's and, uh, this, this, this gal in front of me, uh, it's taken forever. So, okay, I'll use the bathroom first. I come back and they're still doing their order thing. And I, I mean, I was pretty quick about it anyway, but, um, they finished the order, and then she steps right back into line, and she's like, oh, wait, I have some questions about what is the chocolate chunk? 
is it chunky or is it crib? I, I don't know exactly what she was saying, but she was asking what the chocolate chunk cookie meant, what that chunk part of it meant. I guess she's thinking of it as like a Chips Ahoy because they have the chunky Chips Ahoy cookies. Uh, and asking about the consistency of it. I, I don't know. But the guy was at the counter at the register. He's like, oh, it's called chocolate chunk because it's chunks of chocolate in the ch- in the ch- ch- chunk cook the cookie the chocolate chunk cookie <laughs> he said it better than <laughs> i'm stumbling on it now but uh yeah it was a it was an entirely too long conversation that didn't result in anything useful happening so uh but i got get this some this quasi story out of it so i guess it's okay but um yeah, that's that's it as far as the travels for today. I'm in the parking lot just across the street from, um, I was going to say Ch- Chase Center or Ch- Chase Field, Ch- Ch- Chisel, Chisel Bottom Field Records. Um, what is it called? I think it's called, yeah, Chase Field. Um, but the, the show is at Talking Stick Resort Arena. Um, and, uh, yeah, so it's not bad parking, only $15. That's way cheaper than a lot of recent parking, but 50% more than parking at the, the tattoo convention. But anyway, um, tonight on Raw, it's going to be, uh, pretty fantastic. It's a season premiere. Um, I, from what I understand, there's, uh, there's going to be new sets for Raw and SmackDown, um, and they'll be different from each other, I assume. Um, or maybe they'll both have the same new set. But I hope they're both different, and uh, so I'll get a peek of that before the show goes there. I'm sure uh, tons of people are going to get a peek of that and post pictures and all that. I'm excited for that. Um, the matches that we're going to have tonight, we have Rey Mysterio challenging Seth Rollins for the Universal Championship. I am guessing that The Fiend is going to attack uh, and kill Rey Mysterio uh, during that match. So it uh, ends in disqualification, perhaps. Or Seth gets a, gets an actual victory. Uh, or a, you, know, you know what I mean. Um, Seth gets the victory, but then Rey is attacked afterwards. I don't know. But I think that's how the show ends tonight. Because that's how it's ended the last two weeks uh, already. Um, we have Sasha Banks versus Alexa Bliss. Um, oh, I don't even know. I've, I've, I think Sasha Banks will win. I, it makes sense for Sasha to win, I think. I think that makes the most sense. But I will be rooting for both of them. I'm, I'm pretty excited for the ma- that match. Because um, I don't think we've seen them face each other for uh, maybe like a year the last time they went head-to-head was maybe like a year ago or more, maybe. Um, or uh, at least in singles competition. It's, it's, been, a, it's, it's, it's been a while. Um, we also are going to have uh, Miz TV with Hulk Hogan and Ric Flair on there. That's going to be pretty cool. Um, and there is another thing that i uh, forgetting about. Uh, do, 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 and Brock Lesnar will appear doing whatever he ends up doing. So, uh, yeah, I'm excited. Oh, also a new commentary t- team, but they, I don't know. Oh, hey, that's awesome. Sarah Schreiber is official part of Raw. Um, I mean, she's been on Raw for a while anyway, but I think she's this means she's dedicated Raw team member. Um, but we have uh, Dio and Vic um, uh, come out to the commentary team along with uh, J- 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 Jerry Lawler for now. And um, yeah, that's going to be really cool. Um, I might have to, ch- to watch during my drive, um, to, to Los Angeles tonight slash tomorrow morning. Um, I'll, I'll maybe, uh, play back the episode just so I can hear, uh, how the commentary is. Um, 
so yeah, I'm, I'm super excited for tonight. Um, nothing really else. I, I haven't looked at anything else about it, but, um, yeah, all the commentary team stuff is, is pretty interesting. Also the news that John Morrison has signed with, or, or sorry, what is his, well, in, in WWE, that was his name, but, um, I can't remember his actual last name now. Oh, I feel bad about that. But um, I think it would be cool if he, he, he debuted at Survivor Series with a Survivor uh, gimmick. You know, having, having been on Survivor, that is. Um, by the way, go listen to my Survivor episode. This, this season is really great so far, I think. Um, or the, I mean, that's what my opinion of it is. I, it's like, I'm not unsure of that. I, I, I'm sure of my opinion that it's good. So, uh, anyway, uh, yeah, that's some good, that's some news. Uh, see if he goes, uh, goes to NXT, uh, tears things up down there or, if, uh, something else happens. I don't know. Um, uh, speaking of people coming back or whatever, uh, it'd be great if Drew, Drew McIntyre made his return sometime soon. Uh, I haven't heard much about him, but, uh, I've been thinking about him the last couple of weeks, uh, most, well, mostly like the last couple of days. Uh, his, his name has popped into a couple of threads that I was reading and all that. I was like, man, I do miss him. I hope that, uh, whatever the, um, whatever the, the medical issues that he had, uh, I hope that he's recovering from that well and that we can see him sooner than, so, uh, not, not as soon as possible, but, you know, um, soon. I hope that he, he gets well and we can see him back in action. So, um, yeah, I think that pretty much covers everything. I'm going to head, uh, the show starts in about two hours. and uh, just walk around downtown just a little bit. And, um, uh, it's, it's super hot. I actually might, might close my eyes here in the the AC for just a few minutes, but I, I'm afraid if I do that, I might just sleep through the entire show and, or until, and or until the, the vehicle runs out of gasoline. But it seems to be, too, it, the, the needle hasn't budged in these 30 minutes since I started recording this. So, uh, it might make it through the evening, but I'm, that's not going to happen. I'm going to go into the show, enjoy the hell out of it. Um, and, uh, so everybody let me know what you think of tonight's raw, what you're excited for the rest of this week. Um, I'll recap what, what, what we're doing, going ahead and in, heading into, um, uh, the rest of this week's stuff a little bit, um, in the, in the next episode where I'll be talking about what ends up happening on tonight's episode of raw. Um, oh, all the Fox promotion stuff I've seen clips of. I, I don't watch football or anything, so I didn't see these live. I saw, like, the posts of them on Reddit. All that. So, really cool stuff. I It's it's great to see how much they're, they're on board with everything, pretty much. Like, just the, the promotion, having the, the superstars on there, uh, like, going along with the all kinds of, like, bits and stuff like that. It's really fun to see all of that. And, um, I hope it continues beyond just going into this first week. Like, like they're like, okay, we got, we got to the first, uh, the premiere. Now we're good. No, I hope that there's that kind of cross promotion, uh, continued throughout the, throughout the football season, especially, but on all the, all of Fox sports, like just, just lace a little bit of the WWE in there when it, when it, whenever it's relevant and stuff like that but also like the planned sorts of things as well. So, um, yeah, that's been pretty cool. But anyway, um, tweet me at TIW Podcast. Go to TIWpodcast.com for more reviews. If you enjoyed this episode or anything else on the site, please share some links with your friends. Subscribe. Oh, I'm going to talk about one more thing after this. Um, so, uh, subscribe on iTunes, Spotify, Stitcher, YouTube, wherever you like to listen. Stay safe out there and all this, those, the pair, all the, uh, infinite multiverses and um and before i go um on my flight i watched one episode of a show that i've been meaning to watch for a long long time um uh hyper hard boil i think hyper hard boiled gourmet oh my god what is it called it's hyper i gotta look it up
I'm going to look it up. Hyper. Hyper. Hard. Hyper hard boiled gourmet reports. Um, for people around the world in precarious and dangerous circumstances, eating itself is dangerous, precarious, and essential. Um, so the first episode, I only watched the first episode. There's only five episodes in total anyway. Um, but the first one is about Liberia. Uh, so most of the episode is about Liberia, but then, uh, I assume that the end of the episode, I assume it's in Taiwan, uh, because they talk to, they, they, uh, it goes and, and has dinner, just as feast with the Tai, uh, no, not Taiwan. Is it Taiwan? Oh, I feel really... Okay, okay. I'm going to look it up. Just that episode. Let's see. I mean, it's... Okay, the descriptions are... Descriptions I'm finding... Finding... I can't remember if it's Taiwan or Thailand. And... Um... I apologize to uh, that, I, that I can't remember which which of the two it is but it's um, the, it's like the, it, they have the mafia there and they have like they show off like all their tattoos and stuff and they have this huge feast with like shark fin soup and stuff like that it's crazy and it's in stark contrast to the rest of this episode because the rest of the episode is uh, uh, mostly uh, talking to he, he goes and talks to a few people like uh, there's an Ebola survivor that he talks to and uh, goes to see what she eats and learns about her family and all that that all of her family her immediate family died uh, from Ebola but she survived it and that's like that's so just that alone is insane uh, on top of just seeing what they what their lives are like just a little bit of what their lives are like um and then there's like going through the market and seeing there are these these uh bags of of uh cornmeal that were sent from japan as relief but they're sold on the black market for profit uh i mean selling it for anything is for profit because they were uh free they were given to the country to all the people of liberia for uh you know from from japan for uh you know to help people but they've been you know hoarded by the black market to to resell and stuff like that and it's so it's so so interesting and you also you have a, a guy in the studio who's who's just watching this the episode and like reacting along to it and it doesn't react like big and crazy or anything like that but it's it's um i it got me wondering i i want to do some research i need to do some research on this on what how that aspect of japanese television began this is japanese t- tv show um because i see so many clips from these shows where you have that reaction in the corner and it is, it does make it fun. It, it's, it's not necessarily fun, not in this case, but it adds more interest to it. And I, I was just kind of wondering, like, what, how did that come about? What was the first show that did that? How did it catch on? And is it because it feels, it feels like you're watching along with someone? I think that might be the appeal to it. That might also be the appeal to, like, reaction videos, watching reaction videos on YouTube, because um on you, watching youtube is more often than not a solitary experience something that you do by yourself um or at least like when you first see something but then you like make might share it with somebody else or like oh you have to come over and see there's still there is that social aspect but a lot of youtube is also like oh this is what i like to check out um i'm, I'm just waiting for something in line and my headphones in i'm just gonna watch this thing real quick and I think, like, the reaction videos, especially, and this sort of thing with the... De- this is my theory, anyway, that it makes it feel as though you're watching it with someone, even though you're watching it by yourself. And I think that's kind of the appeal to it. But also, uh, it also has, like, a nice, uh, different viewpoint to what's going on. 
Um, even though he doesn't react like super crazy or anything like that, it do, he does. Um, his reactions at times does add to it. Like, oh, that's really I I didn't even realize that about this person. Or like, just just like a very maybe like a little slightly different take on something, and I think that's pretty cool about it as well. But I have to do some research on that and see like where that aspect of some of these Japanese television shows where the, how that got started and um why it, it's so it continues at least through when this show was made and I'm sure that there are still shows especially like game shows and prank shows and stuff like that that absolutely makes sense anyway because you you want to see part of that part of the program is the person watching to be shocked and that kind of seemed like it was is this too because this guy was watching it for the first time so it was really shocking at times um so i talked to the ebola survivor and then goes uh to former child soldiers who after they were done serving the the military whatever they i mean they weren't serving they were forced to do it um because they're abducted and then trained to fight and then just pit up against each other and um like some of the stories is like they had to have been manipulated into doing this like the the one girl um is her her name like lafty i think is her name um she's a big part of this episode because she's the one that actually goes and gets some food that they talk about um i was a little bit disappointed but also like relieved that there wasn't more follow-up to it but uh when they were first talking about the the child soldiers they mentioned that they they were there were rumors or maybe even more than rumors that they had eaten um eaten the flesh of their enemies and stuff like that and i that uh is insane um and mortifying Um, and he does ask them about it, but there's like no, I feel like they didn't answer and they just kind of like let, let, they just avoided the question. It wasn't addressed again after that. And I, I'm, I was kind of curious, like, is like, even if it was just as much to, to verify, is that true? Is that something that happened? Um, and were any of these guys ones who did that and that there, that there were no answers on that front in this episode, but it went, ended up going in a different direction when he met this girl, um, who is, uh, who's now a prostitute. She was a child soldier as well. And she, that all of them live, they said there's over 900 of them in this graveyard. They live there. They sleep in the graves. The graves are their beds. And the... And the <laughs> oh, I was about to... Okay. I have to go with this because... Okay. Because the bones are their money. And so is the... <laughs> What else is the money in there? The because the graves are their beds, and the money and the the bones are their money. Going into I think you should leave now references, but anyway, uh, this episode is not funny. It's not funny, but uh, it is. There are elements of it that are like they're so surreal that you it's unbelievable that you can't like the only way to I don't know like process how messed up it is like just to kind of like see some a little bit of humor in it like how absurd is that but so messed up that over 900 people who up to the okay just okay let's start over 900 people live in a graveyard using the, the the graves as their beds these 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 concrete boxes are their cubicle style beds with bones and 
uh, skulls all over the like, and it's overgrown with 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 uh, it's 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 incredibly bizarre. And that's how over 900 people, and that's just in that graveyard. How many other situations like this are there? It's I I don't even know. They don't address address that. Are these the only ones who are like this? There, there's no way that's the only place where ch- former child child soldiers have ended up. Um, I know I did my closing like 10, 12 minutes ago, but. Oh, thinking about this episode again, I just want to talk more and more about it um, and watch more of this show. I'll probably do more eps- more reactions to more episodes just about this show. Uh, uh, only four more episodes to watch, but... <coughs> Man. All of that's absurd, but it's in- in- insane. But on top of that... All, every single one of those 900 or more, ni- over 900 people, their lives leading up to that is insane that that's happening anywhere. You know, if they, 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 it's even possible for that to happen somewhere. That they were abducted as children, as uh, I don't even know how young they may have been, uh, the, the one um, that we focus on. Uh, she's now a prostitute. I think I said that. Um, go watch this episode. Go. Watch. I'm not doing this episode like any. Just, I'm like summarizing everything, but um, she said. I think she said she, she was served. I keep saying served. That she was a soldier from. He's eleven to thirteen, and that's that's crazy. That's that's crazy. And it's not like they were fighting. They were like they were the last resort to fight against adults. I don't think because it's it really it sounds like they were just fighting other child soldiers that were that were abducted and trained to do the same thing on the other side. I think, but e- even if they were just on one side, it's still insane, and. And now that they're they, uh, while they're gone, maybe their families are killed. Um, in her case, it's it really sounded like the people who abducted her and had her fight on her side were maybe pro- probably the ones who did kill her family. But the, but lied to her. She's eleven years old, you know. Manipulate her th- get into wanting revenge, thinking that's the other side that did it. Where it's, it's probably the people who who abducted her that that, that killed her, her family and stuff. It's so. I don't know. I feel like that's probably more likely the case than actually like. The other side killed her family, and then she just happened to be left behind. And motivated to go and join up to get revenge. No, she. I, I, I think. Anyway, okay. So, um, the, the, this laugh, lafty, um, this woman, uh, we see her go because she said she, she doesn't have money for food, but to get back with her, she'll meet up later in the evening and you, you kind of think, oh, okay, she, she'll have money then. And that's when she's going to go eat. No, that's when she's going to go to work to get money so that she can eat. So like the next like five, 10 minutes of the show is her going and uh, showing, showing the, the director, producer, um, I don't even know if they say his name or anything, but, uh, he goes with her to like the prostitute street and she's trying to get a client. He finally does get a client. Then they, they go away for go, off somewhere for 30 minutes and then she comes back and she has just food she says her back hurts oh, oh my god i'm summarizing this too much but then she she has food and she shares it with him and that's so interest. it's amazing how uh well f- food is the uniting thing like everybody eats and if you're like interested in something 
that somebody loves to eat or it's like what their what their tradition to eat is or I just I mean just what they always eat whatever whatever scale of cuisine it is that there's a certain level of relatability to it that like oh I'm having food now and you're my guest here and uh you've been really respectful to me that kind of thing like here let's uh let's share some food um and and all of that but of course it also helps that he's making a, a, a show about food and that's kind of the entry point if, anyway but um yeah go watch this show i'm gonna watch more of it that's just the first episode there <laughs> those these 15 minutes or so be talking about it and there's so much more the like the commentary on it the reaction to it and stuff i didn't even really t- it, it mention any of that and then also the that last episode or the last section of the episode um i assume is not in liberia but maybe it is in liberia and they have the mafia there i don't i don't think i don't think that's the case but um yeah go check it out the hyper hard boiled i don't think there's a the um hyper hard boiled hyper hard boiled cuisine report gourmet report hyper hard boiled gourmet report it's on netflix there's only five episodes they're like 35 to 40 minutes each i think something like that go check it out um all right i've been talking my, my mouth is drying out and it's i'm in the middle of the desert so that's no good um so uh like i said uh do all the stuff tiw podcast etc and i'll be back real soon with my thoughts on the season premiere of raw from phoenix arizona see you next time bye